Charles Dickens begins his classic tale of two cities with these timeless lines. He says, it was the best of times, it was the worst of times, it was the age of wisdom, it was the age of foolishness, it was the epoch of belief, it was the epoch of incredulity, it was the season of light, it was the season of darkness, it was the spring of hope, it was the winter of despair. So in this paradox, Dickens lucidly captures the turmoil of the French Revolution. And many of us will recognize his uh, emotions um, as it resonates with our experiences of negotiating higher education in the past 20 months, as we too were plunged into an unfamiliar world. All that was once familiar and safe was disrupted as we ventured into the season of unfamiliarity and sometimes darkness. Yet we prevailed with minimal crutches and an abundance of determination. We accepted the daunting challenges and embraced the unfamiliar, choosing instead to see the crisis as possibly the best of times. Indeed, later in the day, the deans of teaching and learning will explore whether we have been catapulted into an age of promise and possibility and whether this would have been possible had we not been plunged into the pandemic. Yet as we celebrate our successes, we must be very careful not to play down the enormous challenges, gaps in our knowledge and learning and the journey that we must travel to negotiate this brave new world. Louder, okay, I'll try louder. So as we so contemplate as our language, language of possibility, I want to share with you um, an adapted version of Anderson and McCormick's 10 Principles of E-Learning, which encapsulates an approach to the development of effective e-learning platforms. This might be considered a, fr a framework that encapsulates the various presentations in the symposium. Okay, uh, so on your screen, you will observe the 10 e-learning principles, which I've adapted somewhat. Um, and th this is intended to be a broad framework, uh, which signals key ingredients of an e-learning strategy. And McCormick and Anderson argue that the more of these principles that are embodied in practice, the better quality uh, the better is the quality of e-learning, and the f and conversely, the fewer of these principles, the lower the quality. And because we've lost quite a lot of time, I regrettably will not be able to go into uh, any further discussion on these principles, uh, except to say that an underlying um, in the framework is the idea that learners have agency. Learning does not take place without the learner exercising this agency and passive learners either will experience limited or incomplete learning. Successful e-learning programs must provide students with an active role in the learning process, notwithstanding the uh, online. So with those int introductory comments, let me welcome you to this, our first e-learning symposium. A special welcome to our two keynote speakers, Prof. Marawa, the Vice Chancellor of uh, University of Johannesburg, and Prof. Craig Blewett of UKZN. Welcome also to presenters and the delegates participating virtually. Uh, the symposium was conceptualized and coordinated by Abdul Baki Badru, who is the IT specialist at UTLO. Uh, Badru was assisted by a small, hard-working team. Is that right? Yes, uh, our team from, from UTLO. Um, so, uh, once again, sincere apologies for the technical difficulties. I think it will be okay from here on. And um, let me, on your behalf, thank the team uh, for what promises to be an intellectually stimulating day ahead. Back to you, Njibula. 
Thank you so much, uh, 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 for <coughs> that uh, welcome and introduction. Um, we are now going to uh, uh, hand over to our Deputy Vice Chancellor, Teaching and Learning, uh, Professor Sonia, to do the uh, opening address. Um, maybe. Uh, before I uh, hand over to Prof. Sonna, let me start by actually uh, reading quickly uh, his bio note, which will uh, give us an idea as to uh, who Prof. Sonna is and uh, what um, uh, uh, the level of uh, uh, knowledge and skills and tech know-how uh, that he brings to uh, the Academy. Uh, uh, Deputy Vice Chancellor Professor Sandile Songa uh, provides pro <coughs> excuse me, strategic leadership on teaching and learning, uh, developing university teaching and learning policies and monitoring their consistent university-wide implementation. Uh, he has served as the University of Zuland uh, as the Deputy Vice Chancellor Teaching and Learning and is currently holding the same portfolio here in the University of KwaZulu-Natal. Thank you very much, um, uh, Program Director. I hope I'm audible. Thank you so much. Um, colleagues, uh, I'm really thrilled to welcome all of you to this event. Uh, I am hosting this event on behalf of our Vice Chancellor, Professor Nana Poku. Um, and um, I've got quite a lineup of uh, speakers, and I can promise you a very live engagement as a result. Um, I will be introducing later on uh, Professor Chilitri Maruala, the Vice Chancellor of the University of Johannesburg as our first keynote speaker. Um, we also have uh, Professor Craig Blewett um, as our second keynote speaker. So Prof. Maruana will be speaking today on the future of online learning capabilities in a contact university post-COVID-19. And Professor Blewett will be talking about active blended teaching engaging the future. Colleagues, I also have today a lineup of 20 speakers from several universities, including the University of Johannesburg. And I'm not talking here about Professor Marwana. It would appear that somebody from the University of Johannesburg has followed his vice chancellor uh, to be with us uh, today. And there's also people from the University of Zululand and Mangosutu University of Technology. Colleagues, it actually gives me great pleasure for me, uh, to uh, host an event that is focusing on e-learning. Uh, including all its uh, versions, whether it's online, whether it's ERT, all of which, as we know, rely very much on the technologies of the fourth industrial uh, revolution. And that is why I am very pleased that we have the Vice Chancellor of the University of Johannesburg who is a, a very well-known speaker and expert on the fourth industrial revolution technologies uh, and a wide range of their applications, including uh, e-learning and ERTs uh, during this current phase of uh, COVID-19. And he will also be speaking about what we can expect post-COVID. Here at our own university, 
uh, University of KwaZulu Natal, like all the other universities, we embarked on a hurriedly put together program to make sure that we finished the year 2020. And thanks to the efforts of many of our academics, we concluded the year 2020 with minimal losses and we still managed to catch up some of those lost students. And yet we find ourselves in 2021 still with um, a lot of work to do, even that the pandemic is still with us. E-learning has been the method of choice, not only here, but across the world. In China, when the pandemic started, the government declared a program of continuing learning while stopping classes. And then interestingly there, the government developed more than 2,400 online learning courses and made these available for all universities in China to pick up and use and modify as they please. Here in South Africa, on the other hand, we appear to have adopted an approach of every university seeing uh, to its own needs. However, as we know, it has worked well for virtually all of us. I am not aware of a university that failed to complete 2020. E-learning has always been with us, you know, even before COVID-19, but we only took a cursory look at it, and never really paid too much attention. Now, we're really taking a, a long and hard look at uh, e-learning and the uh, technologies that are associated with it. 